So let's get started with the Beam Bridge model and the introduction of Sophistic Structural Desktop and Sophie Plus. Therefore, I simply open the SSD. When starting a new project in Sophistic and being intent to use Sophie Plus to so AutoCAD as a graphical preprocessor, the recommended workflow is starting with Sophistic Structural Desktop or SSD. Now as SSD is open, we see the startup window. There's nothing, nothing extraordinary here, but I would like to point out the right part of the window. It is divided into two areas, resources on top and movies. Resources includes four hyperlinks to Sophistic tutorials and Sophistic information portal, as well two types of verification manuals, design and mechano, which both come with the installation and are stored on your hard drive. Especially when start using Sophistic, the Sophistic tutorials are useful as they cover lots of topics and different subjects. So let's have a briefly look into the tutorials. So these are the online tutorials for version 2018. I just click on list of tutorials and you see here certain topics. We can select between bridge buildings specific steel designs, geotechnics, or dynamic analysis. So I stick for day to day uh, for bridge design. And again, I click, for instance, on concrete slab bridge. And you see, if you scroll down, these are step-by-step -step tutorials to create your bridge project. As well, all project data files can be downloaded to start straightforward on your computer. You will find as well some tutorial videos for certain steps to go through. <clears throat> How to start a new project? So just click on new project icon. You can do it here or as well here in the toolbar. I use this command here. The first thing we need to do is to select a directory. I recommend not to choose a network drive for your project files because while running the analysis or design information is going to be written in the database. So it might slow down your company network speed. So first of all, we need to select a directory. I have here one in my presentations and a name of my project. I call it Bridge. Furthermore, I enter a title. This title will show up afterwards in your reports as well in your printouts. So again, Bridge example. The next part to do is to decide what design code I like to use. Here I select Eurocode. For now, it's also the default. However, there are several design codes available. I select again foot bridges or road bridges. In that case, I use a road bridge and I keep these as it is. The next thing is I need to specify the system I'm going to be created. In our case, uh, we will do a 3D FEA system. However, there are as well 2D systems available or simply frame system or girder systems. The advantage is, of course, you can save time during, the, during entering, for instance, your support conditions when just needing a 2D frame system or a 2D slab system. What I'd like to point out here are the unit set. The unit set is a quite smart feature of Sophistic. It allows you to set up certain units for your project. The default is the structural engineering, in, structural engineering unit set and is shown up here. A rough overview gives you here the sections are needed to set up in millimeter the system in meter. However, you can change those units without any problem. For instance, if you'd like to change the standard value for the length instead of meter, just select something you might like or your project is needed. Of course, you can do change as well the result units. For instance, for area reinforcement here, instead of using square centimeter per square meter, you can switch, for instance, to square millimeter per square meter. However, for this project, I just keep it simple and leave the default values. And I click on OK. The last thing I need to decide is what preprocessor application I'm going to use. In our case, we are going to use AutoCAD, so Sophie Plus, so I can stick with the default value. However, as you remember, you can do as well the graphical uh, input of your model by using Revit or, for instance, Rhino. 
or for those who are more experienced in Sophistic, the pure text input is here available as well. So we stick with this and I switch here, I forgot this, to a 3D FEA system for our bridge. And I click on OK. This is the home of Sophistic Structural Desktop, or in short, SSD. Um, on the very top, you can find the menu. On the left, the project or task tree, and the light blue area represents the system visualization to do some plausibility checks or deflection checks. I'd like to point out just a few icons and applications for now. So let's start at the menu. On the most left here, it's the uh, standard file menu and brings nothing what wouldn't be expected here, but a feature to save the current project as a template. So you see here, save project as template. It, it allows you to save a completed project to use it again for similar ones in the future by simple create a new project from template. On the most right here, again, we do have the help menu. It comes with tips, hyperlinks, and relevant stuff for the technical support. Again, especially if you start using Sophistic, I recommend checking the online tutorials. The toolbar as itself comes with default commands like open, save, creating a new project, but as well with the icons to access the post-processing applications such as WinGraph, Result Viewer, and the Result Browser to generate graphics and tables for the reports. The project tree on the left, you can organize your project. As well, as well, it is the place to add additional tasks to your project. Keep in mind, it is important to sort all tasks properly before running the calculation of your project. So the order, need, the order of the tasks needs to make sense. So it could not be that you do a combination before you get analysis results for the load cases. The system information top here or tasks here, if I double click on this one, again, my uh, definition of the new project is open, except there's a few change here. For instance, you are not able to change the design code during an running project. The material task, uh, this is the place to define your materials. You can define it from scratch by just selecting a new material from the design code, or as well, you can simply import a material from another ex uh, example or from a database. The cross section, here you do, you do have two options to define a cross section. The first one is just create a standard cross section. That means I'm able to select one of those predefined cross section out of the library. For instance, if I click on rectangle beam, I can set up straightforward some information of this rectangle and create a new cross section. A second possibility, and this is what we are going to look into a little bit later, is to create a new solid section or a new thin world section. This allows you to create a cross section completely predefined by yourself um, for your bridge, for instance, or for other needs. Um, the next task is um, this one here. It's, as you can imagine, it's the task to your graphical user interface to create your model. In our case, it's Sophie Plus X. Adding a new task, because those tasks you see here are not all of the available one, is quite easy. Just use the right click and you get a context menu. And the second last, you get the insert task menu and I click on this one and the task library is going to open. There are a lot of tasks available here. So just to show how it works, I like to insert, for instance, interactive graphic to represent some graphical outputs in my reports. So I select this task and click on OK. Now this task is inserted at that uh, position here in my module tree, but I'm not happy with this. So there's no need to worry. I just use the drag and drop, select it with the mouse click with the left mouse and move it to the location. I like to use this interactive graphic task. How to run the analysis? Um, again, use the right click of your mouse. For instance, I use the right click here at materials. If I do so, I get four options here. 
The first one is calculate the selected task, so in that case materials. I can calculate all tasks in the project tree or I can simply calculate up to materials or from materials. So let's get a next step and open our graphical input, the Sophie Plus X. So I simply double click on this one. Uh, when using Sophie Plus or Sophie Plus X, um, the good thing is it's based on AutoCAD and we use the native AutoCAD commands for move, copy, and so on and so on. And as well, the native DWG file. So now we have AutoCAD open. On top of this, we have Sophie Plus. You see here the standard ribbon bar from AutoCAD and here on the left-hand side, the project tree, which represents Sophie Plus, so Sophistic capabilities. You will recognize here we have two similar uh, tasks as in the SSD. Um, that means uh, Sophie Plus and SSD are connected through the database. So if I do any changes, for instance, on the material or I create a new material, this will show up as well in my SSD. The sidebar comes with seven tabs here, and I will like to go briefly through all of them. The first one, system. As we already saw here, we have materials, cross sections, can set up bore profiles, so borehole information for half space analysis, for instance. We can set up workflows and we can informations, uh, define information for my pre-stressing system. And as well, we can define axes. I will come back to this a little bit later. The second tab is the structural element tabs. To create your structure using Sophie Plus, structural elements are needed. There are points, lines, and areas available. Those elements represent, in example, a support, a beam, a cable, or a column, or a slab and a shell. To create a new element, use always the very left command icon. To modify a selected element, just use the very right one. It is also possible to simply double click on the element and the modify properties uh, uh, will open to do your changes. It is possible as well to connect, for instance, two or several points to each other, as well lines. Um, there are two types to do so. The first one is a point link or a line link, as well a point constraint or line constraint. The difference is quite easy. When using a link, you're allowed to set up a certain stiffness for the connections. If you use a constraint, you had a rigid constraint, so a rigid connection. So I will just have a look into structural points. Um, the structural point can use an example to define support, supports such as fixed or rigid supports or spring supports. At the start, using the software, I recommend to stick with the tabs general, support conditions, springs, and loads. Structure lines. Uh, the structure line command creates a line or beam with structural properties, such as uh, what type you would like to assign, what cross section, beam hinges, as well as support conditions. All those can be found quite easy. Here is the beam or cable assignment. You can set up beam hinges if you like and the support conditions. In special case, as well, some betting information for your lines. Structural area. To handle shell elements, it is needed to define those as a structural area. There are meshing properties available here, support options or beddings, and as well, geometric uh, information to set up. For instance, if you go to the meshing and you intend to define a more um, or uh, refine your mesh, for instance, just enter a value here for those specific element. The third tab is loads. There are two general types of loads available. Those are the element loads and the free loads. The element loads, this type um, of load is uh, referred to one of the previous shown uh, structural elements. The advantage is obvious. When moving a structural element in your structure, the load will stick on the element. The free loads uh, command creates or modifies a load which is not associated with any element and therefore can be placed freely at any location in your mob or project. The fourth tab here is pre-stressing. Uh, 
Tendons can be created based on a free form line, an AutoCAD line, or refer to a geometric axis, and can be generated for slabs, shells, and beam elements. The filter is a really great feature not to get lost in a huge project, for instance. There are two main filters available. It's the structure filter and the load filter. So within this general filters, you can select, for instance, a certain type of your structure or a certain group if available. The second last tab is the tools tab. This, uh, here you will find additional commands as well as uh, some visualization options. Uh, last but not least, the message bar um, um, tab. Um, this keeps you up to date on warnings and errors caused during the export of your project. Um, with all these shown uh, features here and capabilities, you now it is now possible to create almost all types of structures. So when it comes to bridges, there is another smart feature. And in the following minutes, I like to introduce you to the computer edit bridge design technology, or in short, the CABD concept. The CABD technology allows you to define your bridge referred to a geometric axis, which is based on an alignment. Furthermore, assigning a fully parametric cross section to the axis reveals the real power of the CABD technology. So let's get start creating a geometric axis. The geometric axis can be defined on a simple AutoCAD line or created from scratch. Creating the geometric axis from scratch allows you to modify the axis by simply changing the parameter of the horizontal or vertical alignment in then every stage of your project. So to create this new axis, you need to simply right click here on, here on this task and you get three options. The first one is creating an axis from scratch. The second, create it or transfer it from an AutoCAD line. And the third is simply import the already defined axis from a previous project. So I will now create a new axis. The first thing to do is we have to name this axis. I use axis. The first option we need to set up here is the horizontal alignment. The input allows you to define your geometry in the plan view. Allowed elements are um, such as line, arc, clothoid, bloss, sine, or cosine. So for now, let's keep it simple and simply change the length of our geometry. I change it to 50 meters. And you see immediately the preview is going to be updated. After confirming to OK, you see as well all available possibilities of the axis here, and you get a first idea how your axis look like. The vertical alignment, um, to show you the effect when adding a vertical alignment information, let's simply add a third um, station here for this example. Therefore, I select the first line and use the matching command to insert below the selection a third one. So you see already the total length is divided into two, that means 25 meters. I enter a height of 10 meter and the update at, at the graphic, you can see an update of the geometry already, but I won't have a kink in my uh, alignment. So I enter as well as a radius, for instance, for 50 meters. And now I get this smooth alignment for my uh, geometric axis. I confirm this with OK. So nothing can be seen here now because on the plan view, if I rotate it to the perspective, you see already the uh, alignment. The third option is variables. Um, variables are needed when creating a parametric cross section. I will again come back to variables when explaining the cross section editor later. For now, let's define simply a new variable to see how the workflow goes within. Therefore, I need to click on the plus on the left top. And you see already I get the predefined name of A, but I would like to change it to H because I would like to change afterwards the height of my uh, cross section. As well, you get um, um, millimeters at, as a unit, and this is caused because of the unit set I've selected at the beginning. 
but I can change this here again if I like. So I will do so and change it instead of millimeters to meters. I need to take care, of course, if I change the unit here to meters, to change as well the predefined values here. So 1000 might be a lot for a cross section, so I need to change this to meter, so one. Um, of course, it is possible to add additional points here. It's quite the same system as in the vertical alignment. I simply select the first line, add another line below, 25 meters, and enter, for instance, a volume of two. Now I get this nice graph of my um, variable. However, I'm not happy with the kink, so I switch polygonal, for instance, to transition left and right. And what I get is such a nice and smooth alignment. Click on OK. The fourth option is placements. Placements represent specific locations on your axis and can be a support, as here the default, construction point joint, access at the start, at the end, and construction point cable. For all of these placements, a local working plane will be automatically created for the structural elements. Those can be used, for instance, for a substructure definition. The working planes are aligned perpendicular to the axis and additional rotations can specify it. So how to specify these rotations is quite simple. I just go to the placement, you see it's highlighted already here. Go for instance to rotation to local set of displacement and to enter value of 50 degree. And you see I got the rotation of this one. So if I click on OK and have a look back in my view here, you see as well the rotation. Uh, but there's more for these placements. Um, I am able to define, as already mentioned, my substructure within the placements, within the cross-member editor. So the cross-member editor allows you to, to do some modifications of your structural elements in each of those placement planes in 2D or in 3D. So if I hover over this placement it's going to be highlighted and if I double click now my place my cross member editor is going to open. I will come to this feature a little bit later when starting to creating my bridge. So I close this again. Last but not least we do have this option called secondary axis. A secondary axis is always referred to a main axis in our case it's called axis and is parallel to it. They are useful when creating multi girder systems as well for bridge decks when using ARIA elements. So to create a new one, I simply use the right click, create with offset for instance, and you already see a secondary axis with a distance of one meter is going to be created. However, I will skip this for now. I would like to show you because uh, to save time as well, uh, to show you the import access from Sophistic database capability. So if I use this command, it allows me to select, for instance, a previous prepared database of Sophistic where already an axis was defined. But not only an axis I would be able to import, I can also import structural elements from this project or as well load cases. But for now, I just like to select the axis and I click on OK. So you see all my information shows up immediately. If I have a look, for instance, at the variables, you see here the specific definition for my bridge, as well for the placements. So the second main part of defining the bridge besides the geometry is the cross-section. To use the entire capability of the computer-aided bridge design technology, we need to create the cross-section in the cross-section editor. Therefore, again, um, Let's go to the cross section, use the right click and create a new solid section and the reinforced concrete. Now the cross section properties are going to op be open and I'm going to, uh, um, it asks me straightforward the name of the cross section. Therefore, I enter, for instance, CS01. I keep almost everything uh, as default, so there's no need to change uh, something here. However, just to give a rough idea, we have possibility to, set, to change some analytical parameters here, have some additional properties, 
reinforcement layer, I will skip this. There are some tutorials online, so you can have a look at the tutorials, how to define this one. And stages, we will have another webinar next week about the stages. And what I like to point out is the variables tab. As you remember, we have already defined a variable here in our axis definition. So what we need to do is simply import the variable of this. However, it's also possible to create a new variable or delete another one. So I use import. As we have only one axis in our database, I can just only select this one. So I use H as my parameter, add it to the section and I close this one. So you see here the comment of this parameter, it was imported from the axis. So I click on OK. Now this parameter or this variable is assigned to my cross section, but there's no cross section at all here. So um, again, to save time, I'm not starting to create a cross section from scratch here by using the AutoCAD lines. I would like to import a defined cross section of another DWG file. Therefore, I use the AutoCAD native insert and block or insert block command. And the browse to my bridge cross section I have prepared, click on open, click on OK, and I'm now specify the insertion point exactly on the origin. Okay, this is now my cross-section geometry. I would like to point out here, always check the drawing units here on top. And if the template you have inserted from the cross-section suits to these units, the easiest way is simply set up a measure from left to the right. And as I do have 6,000 millimeters here, this should be fine. Um, now we have just a simply AutoCAD line as our boundary, so there's no cross-section information at all for this geometry. Now we need to specify the boundary. Therefore, we have this command boundary on the sidebar. I click on this one and I keep everything on default as it is. You are able to define here a certain or specific material as well uh, um, construction stage information. What I like to do is just go to the model space again, right click, open the context menu, and you see you get three options, pick lines or curves, rectangle, or point in area. In our case, because we do have a closed polygonal line here, point in area is the most suitable. So I use this one, click inside the cross section, and click on escape. Now I do have my cross section boundary defined. I can run an analysis of this, uh, cross section and by enter the F2 key on your keyboard, I get the first information about my cross section properties or cross section values. If I'm done with the definition of my cross section here, I would close this one. But I'm not ready yet because I would like to assign now my parametric information because I would like to use my variable H in my cross section. Therefore, I use the parametrics here on the left uh, bottom of the sidebar, Cartesian reference. If I click on this one, you see I'm going, it asked me to specify the constraint point. You can see this here on my cursor as well in the command line. So I need to select my, my reference point here. Uh, the next step, it's asking me for the horizontal distance and after this for the vertical distance. So the horizontal distance should be, because I would like to assign exactly to the region, um, um, to this point and the vertical distance should be as well to this point. And what Sophistic is doing now, it shows you these constant values what are now uh, at this cross section. Um, if I wouldn't change anything now, it will keep the constant value of 2000 for more height. But you see this small lock here. So what I need to do is to toggle this lock and enter hashtag H to assign my parameter h, click on OK. And now it's not 2000 uh, used for my uh, export afterwards, it's used the information of the parameter h. I need to do this as well for the right corner here. So again, quotation reference, I click on this point by two times enter, I refer straight forward to the region of the cross section. Again, I need to toggle this block and uh, hashtag h, and click on OK. Good. Now I'm done for now for my cross section. I can close this cross section. So close editor and save. Good. So now we do have our geometry and our cross section. What we need to do now is to bring those together. Therefore, I need to assign the cross section to my uh, structural geometry. 
How to do so? I need to go to the structural element tab to my structural line command. And on the second tab here, you have um, to change uh, a few things to assign the right cross section. For instance, I would like to assign an eccentric beam and I would like to use my cross section number one. As I just have one, this is quite simple. I stick with this one. So next step is I go back again to my model space, right click, have a look of my options I do have. And you see the second one here, it's segment on axis. I use this one. I hover over my axis and you see you get this nearest object snap. I click with the live, left mouse button and again I get two options. Should the program assign between all placements or only use the segment closest to the pick point? So of course I would like to assign this cross section between all the placements. I can close this one. Now you see the cross section, section was assigned to this geometric axis. Okay, if you're wondering now, hey, what is the, where is the uh, variability of the cross section? What, what happened with my parameter h? This can only be checked within the uh, visualization in SSD, and therefore we need to export the structure first. So we do this. On the left top here, we get this export button to create your model. This is the export uh, window. We have some uh, options here. We can uh, export either a mesh entire system or just a partial system. So I stick with the entire one. As well, you can set up some meshing parameters. So I keep everything on default and simply click on OK. If you have a look here at this window, we get Sophie Mesh C and Aqua. Those are responsible for creating the mesh and Aqua uh, is responsible to create the cross-section information. If I now go back to my SSD, I get already my bridge geometry and get as well this nice shape too. However, if we have a look at this bridge, I guess every one of you will know that will not bear any loads at all because we need some supports. And this is the next thing I like to do. Therefore, I go back to um, Sophie Plus and I will jump straight forward into the placements. As you remember, we do have placements here. To access the placements or certain placements, I simply hover over one of those placements and double click to open the cross member editor. Um, you see already the cross section for this um, placement. And by the way, this is always the interpolated cross section. So, but now we need to set up the support information. I create a new structural element, a structural point exactly here without any information at all. But I won't set up the support exactly at the corner. So I move by using the native AutoCAD command, move it to the right with 0.5, for instance. Furthermore, I create a new point here at the center. And I need, of course, to connect those two points because our structure line is exactly defined here in the origin of the cross section. There's no connection at the moment from this to that point. So I go to point constraint and I keep this as it is. So it's a rigid connection between this point and the support point. The next step is because I have no support conditions here so far, I need to double click again on this node. So I can either create support conditions simply by activating here the local constraints, for instance, PX, PY, or PZ, or I can set up springs. And I would like to set up spring elements here. Therefore, I create on the plus button here, change from global to local X, for instance, and the stiffness of one E8. I create another one, local Y direction, I keep one E8, and another one for the local Z direction. And I apply this. Of course, I need this for the second, uh, for the right side as well. Therefore, I use the mirror command. So this one, I select all elements here and mirror this to this place. But I would like to release the local Y direction. Therefore, I double click on this spring, simply go to extra stiffness, enter one to release it and apply. Okay, the next step is I need to assign this information to all of the placements. There is a nice trick to do so. The easiest way is using the right click, go to clipboard and use this command copy with base point. So I do so, I use this command and now it asks me to specify the base point. The base point should be here. And now I'm going to select my elements. 
okay and enter now this is uh, in, stored in my clipboard now i need to jump to the next placements i will jump first of all to the placement four it's the right end of my bridge and i simply use again the right click the right click and clipboard and use paste and for insertion point i use the origin here we go good for the mid support here i can do this as well but um i would uh, like to simplify this a little bit therefore i use this copy uh, paste again at the origin okay and i will now just create the following support for instance i do have two meters here for my cross section and i will uh, with the gap of 0.5 meter should start a column of five meter so what i like to do is the following i simply move one of those constraints and points exactly on this point here and i delete all the information of the springs so double click on this one and I delete this one this one and this one apply so it just have a simply structural point here and of course i need to set up a structural line therefore I click on line create a centric beam but not with this bridge cross section i need to create a new cross section a rectangle cross section therefore i enter width of 1000 and a height of 2000 just a simple one and i create a new structural line confirming with enter and of course i need to set up a support condition at the bottom therefore i create a new structural point and i assign straightforward the support conditions for all of those i can select them simple each by one or i can click on all click on this okay and if i now close this you see you get already oops i did a mistake you see i assigned the wrong cross section for the pylon so i just need to select cross section to apply and here we go so this is my bridge model so far i can now export this one so i will do so keep it as it is takes a bit and go straight forward to my ssd and i have already my bridge model here to test this i recommend always create a simply standard load case a self-weight load case or dead load so go to the load case manager create a new load case click on new and enter the name of the load case for instance dead load the action can be stick for g underscore one but it's important for the dead load to assign a factor of 1.0 click on OK. So now for the global system, for the global project, we do have a load case of self-weight factor 1.0. I export this again and run the analysis. <clears throat> OK, here we go. Um, to run the analysis, it's quite easy. Double click on linear analysis, start it from here, or simply right click and run the analysis so i will just do it that way here we have one load case number one it's g underscore one that load case click on okay and what i get is this nice deflection here good how to check the results as well in a 2d view to get a printout for instance therefore i use this interactive graphic here but before that i move it a little bit further up exactly after the linear analysis i double click on this one and if i do so it will open the same program called wing graph here so so i recommend to implement the interactive graphic because then it's going to be considered as well in the reporting straightforward so this is the graphic here and i like just to visualize the results of the beams for instance forces m y font is a little bit too small and you see i just have one load case i represent the results here there are lots of possibilities here but this is uh, not part of the webinar for today so i will close this again click on save yes i accept the changes and i run this for instance to show you what happened 
have a look in the reports by using the right click, which is the textual output of your calculation, also called report browser. And I got these pictures straightforward in my reporting. You remember I enter as a header bridge example at the beginning. You can um, access the post-processing applications here as well. So for instance, for the text reporting, I can in click on linear analysis and it's going to be open, but I can access this as well simply right click on the task and go on reports. And you get the text output of this calculation. Furthermore, you can access the result viewer. And what I like to show in the last few minutes is how to export your results to Excel. Uh, therefore, first of all, we need to set up some results in a table. So in my case, I just go to Beam Elements Forces MY. So I do have one load case, it's called dead load. These are my um, numbers of the beams, some coordinate information and my result for each beam at the start and at the end. So what I need to do is right click on this layer of the page and go to properties. Activate this checkbox XLS export and just enter a name Excel export for your file, which is going to be generated. You can also create a specific worksheet, but I keep as it is. Click on OK. So nothing happened now for now, but I need to export to Excel now. As you see, something has happened. And to access this Excel file, I just open the Explorer, click here. And this is my project directory. And you see this Excel file. I will open this Excel file just to show you how it looks like. Here you have the results. And those results, of course, can be used for do some checks in other softwares or for hand calculations as well within your Excel sheets. <clears throat> OK. Within this project directory, I'd just like to point out some, uh, I guess, also uh, important things. If you create a project with uh, Sophistic, so Sophistic Trustful Desktop and Sophie Plus, you will get two files named DWG, this is the AutoCAD file for your structure, as well as the .sophistic file. Those two files are the most important one to uh, back up your project, for instance, and uh, to share with your colleague, for instance. So there's no need to send your colleague, for instance, the entire database, because you can imagine this database could be get really huge. So it's just needed to share those two files, and it's possible to regenerate the database from those two. OK, this is the end of the presentations uh, for today. Have a good day, and hope I see you uh, during the next webinar. Thank you.